Cancer is often described as a disease of complexity. There are hundreds of oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes, and any particular tumor may have many mutations, sometimes 50 or more. Each tumor is genetically unique, and within each tumor there may be huge hetero heterogeneity. To understand which features in this complex picture are essential for malignant transformation, we must accept that cancer is not a fixed phenotype, it is a process. When we recognize this, we find that the dynamics of the process are actually quite simple. A crucial early insight was the discovery by David Lane and others of P53, and the subsequent observations that the P53 gene had mutations or other defects in more than half of human and mouse cancers, and that defective P53 resulted in loss of function of the G1 checkpoint, one of the major control points in the cell cycle regulating entry into S phase. Those tumours that retain wild-type P53 may have other defects in the G1 checkpoint, such as loss of activity of RB or epigenetic silencing of P16. Still other tumours retain a potentially active G1 checkpoint, but constantly override it because of elevated levels of cyclin D, resulting from a constitutively activated EGF receptor, or RAS protein. So, loss or override of the G1 checkpoint appears to be necessary for malignant transformation, but it may not be sufficient. Many epithelial cells that have defective G1 checkpoints are described as pre-malignant, such as intestinal polyps, warts or benign skin tumours. These cells have abnormal proliferation, but they're non-invasive, non-metastatic and remain diploid. There are two current views of the nature of malignant progression. Hanahan and Weinberg described the hallmarks of cancer, six properties expressed by malignant tumours acquired by successive somatic mutations, each of which conferred a selective survival advantage on the cells that expressed it. They accepted that the probability of a cell acquiring six successive mutations in the lifetime of a human, let alone a mouse, was extremely low, and suggested that genetic instability of tumour cells might be an enabling factor. An alternative view of malignant progression, propounded by a number of people, most persuasively by Peter Duisberg, is that since all malignant tumours are to some degree aneuploid, Chromosomal instability is more than just an enabling factor. It is the single defining characteristic of malignancy, with the other hallmarks of cancer resulting as inevitable consequences of genetic instability. So it's clear that these alternative views of cancer agree on the ultimate phenotype, but disagree on the dynamics of the process of how the cell gets to acquire the hallmarks of advanced malignancy. Thus, the way to decide between these competing views is to model the dynamics. Malignant progression is a process of Darwinian selection, so I chose to model it using a genetic algorithm. Treating cancer is a series of four or more successive mutations, and assuming for the purposes of this study that the lifetime of a mouse is 1,000 days, the model showed that no reasonable estimates of the mutation rates would ever result in mice acquiring spontaneous tumours in their lifetimes. Clearly, spontaneous tumours could only happen if some factor was increasing the effective mutation rates. Thus, as argued by Duisberg and others, genetic instability is clearly the essential lesion in cancer cells. Since aneuploidy is the result of inaccurate chromosome segregation in mitosis, the mutations that drive aneuploidy and thus cancer must lie in the mitotic spindle assembly checkpoint. However, modeling the situation in which the first event in tumor formation was a mutation in the spindle checkpoint predicted that such cells would have a competitive disadvantage compared to normal cells. Cells with a defective spindle assembly checkpoint have abnormally high cell loss factors, so that clones possessing such mutations tend to die out spontaneously. The observation that cells are found in nature that have a defective G1 checkpoint but a normal spindle checkpoint, that is pre-malignant cells, but never the other way round, suggested that cells with a defective spindle checkpoint could only flourish if they already possessed a defective G1 checkpoint, to give the cells a sufficient proliferative advantage to overcome the proliferative disadvantage of aneuploidy. Thus, cancer cells must have a defective G1 checkpoint and chromosomal instability, and these two effects must occur in an obligatory order. 
modeling this two checkpoint theory of cancer predicted in agreement with observation that mice should have a lifetime risk of spontaneous cancer of a few percent. The fact that a mathematical model correctly predicts cancer incidence doesn't prove that the two checkpoint theory of cancer is correct but the inability of the competing theories to give correct predictions shows that they must be incorrect. Understanding the dynamics of tumour progression has implications for identifying new targets for cancer treatment and new strategies for cancer prevention. I believe that the dynamic model described in my paper will be a useful tool for devising future treatment and prevention strategies.